It is the first day of spring in 2024. I quite like the spring equinox because for me, uh, starting the year in January makes a bit less sense than starting the year today. Um, why do I think that? Well, let's look at the last months of the year. September, October, November, December. Why would those months be numbered 7, 8, 9 and 10? Well, that would only make sense if the beginning of the year was in March. And what happens? Well, we've got the spring equinox. You could also see the four cycles this way as well. You could say spring is birth, the beginning, where the trees start to get leaves and the flowers start to blossom. And this is beginning. This is youth, in other words. In other words. And uh, then you would go through summer, which you could see as uh, maybe, you know, adolescence or young adulthood where everything is in full bloom and fully grown. It's when the days are the longest. It's when you've got the most sun. And then, of course, you get to a point where you're getting older. You're not as agile as you used to be. The leaves start falling from the trees, and this would be autumn. And I think the finality of our lives, death, uh, when it all comes to a close, it can be best represented with winter, of course. And I think, you know, seeing the year starting in spring, or on the 22nd of March, at the spring equinox, for me, makes much more sense than the year beginning on the 1st of January. Of course, I'm not going to go out there and change the world and change all the calendars, this is just the way that I like to see it in my own mind. So to give a quick little review of the last three months, uh, in other words, the winter season, um, ever since I made the last quarterly update video, which seems to be the only sort of video I make on this channel anymore at the moment, these three months have been very good. You might notice on the fridge behind me there is a calendar. Uh, well, the calendar's underneath, but I have a calendar and schedule. That schedule over there I made in January. And I made it with the purpose of organizing my life around completing certain tasks. Um, it's organized in a way that allows me to contribute a bit of time every day towards the things that I find important and uh, fill my week in that method as well. On top of having made this sort of schedule for my day to day, I also had a realization uh, just over a week ago about how much time I was spending on screens without actually being aware of how little time I was spending away from screens. So excluding the time that I spend asleep and the time that I spend at work and the time that I spend commuting to work and back, I asked myself how much of my free time isn't spent in front of screens and I've estimated it at around 20 out of my around 60 hours of free time that I get in a week. This felt very problematic for me and um, in our ever more technologically advanced world, we are ever more dependent on it. Uh, we are never bored. We're always entertained. There's always something else to see. But while I do have objectives, for example, wanting to become a video editor, I haven't really been spending any time this year working on it. Uh, so one of those main goals I've had for this year, unfortunately, has not uh, seen any uh, time put into it, which uh, I think is most definitely the thing that I can point to, which is contributing the most to me feeling like I am wasting my free time. Although, granted, I do need to spend time on screens to do that. Uh, when I'm not looking at screens, I enjoy reading. I've got here the Holy Bible. I'm about... Uh, probably not even 20% through it, even though it's been three months. So I've got a lot of catching up to do, I think. But I have read uh, another book, which I will be reviewing in another video very soon, called How to Raise a Healthy Gamer by Dr. K. He has Healthy Gamer GG channel on YouTube and streams on Twitch. Uh, combines his expertise as a doctor, as a psychiatrist, slash psychologist, neuroscientist, being able to grab all those fields that interest me and uh, thread it also with uh, the Ayurvedic tradition that you find in Buddhism and Hinduism and uh, in Eastern medicine and philosophy. He manages to create a really great bridge between the two. 
That's not what that book's about. That's just what Dr. K is. What the book is about is, like it says, how to raise a healthy gamer. And I know that if I ever have children, that it will be the most fulfilling, rewarding experience in my life. And in this world that I was just saying is so technologically dependent, how does one go about even approaching that sort of task? And I found that even if I don't have children at the moment, reading that book and just put in the analogy for not necessarily video games, because I don't really play any, um, I make the analogy for, let's say, screen time spent on watching YouTube videos or browsing posts on X, for example. When I spend my time doing that and I read that book and I ask myself, how would I take care of someone who's spending too much time on that? What would I change? And so it's given me a lot of things uh, to consider uh, that you know, I do spend a bit too much time on screens. And so taking time to read a physical book, and I now much prefer it over a Kindle Despite the utility of the Kindle having thousands of books wherever you go, I very much prefer the actual physical uh, books uh, having that. That's something I want to focus on on the next three months. I had a project I wanted to work on this year, I've mentioned it before, called the Twitter Files. And I've already made uh, the first few steps towards making the first episode. And I think what I'll do is I'll split each Twitter files into two different video basically. So each Twitter file thread I want to make firstly as a video just compiling the thread into video format where I read what the tweets say, I share images on the screen that are relevant to what the tweets are talking about, I do some basic video editing, nothing too fancy, uh, but my whole main goal was to summarize the Twitter files but I want to do that in a separate video. So I want to have all of the Twitter files made in just video form for each single Twitter file thread, just showing what the Twitter files thread have in it. And then I also want to make one video for each of those threads, but summarizing it, paraphrasing it, uh, using some direct quotes, of course. It will be basically the same thing, but more condensed down into a shorter video. That is a project that I really want to work on this year, it's something I want to get done this year, the same as, for example, reading the Bible is something I really want to get done this year. And reading so many other books is nothing I want to do. And spending more time in nature. I don't like uh, this idea that I'm not making progress towards uh, the goals or that I'm falling behind. Uh, I really don't like that idea. It does make me uncomfortable that I've, I feel like I've got to fulfil uh, certain goals, achieve certain things. Uh, I place this idea for the potential for me to be happy in the future dependent on that and present by not being in that hypothetical expectation that isn't being fulfilled. I'm not happy in the present when I think about those things. And uh, I know that the best thing I can do is if I did follow the schedule that I got up there and just spend a few hours on these things every day, I would feel much, much happier with myself. Uh, but weirdly enough, despite me always insisting and repeatedly saying I want to become a video editor, it's not something that I naturally gravitate towards and I do have to kind of bring myself to the computer to work on it and I have to set deadlines for myself to be able to actually get those projects done. It's not something that I'm naturally gravitating towards. So I have to make effort to not naturally gravitate towards spending too much time watching YouTube or browsing on X. I do have to spend more time reading books and working towards video editing. Um, I still at the same time have to be a bit easier on myself because I have made fantastic progress in my life uh, ever since I started getting into the whole world of uh, self-help. I've made really fantastic progress in so many areas of my life and I'm in a really good position right now and I'm very happy with how things are going. Something that also happened in the last three months is the crypto market has had a boom so I went green for the first time in over two years which is a uh, a big relief. It's a nice feeling. I haven't sold. Uh, I'm not planning to sell until 2029 or 2030. Uh, but it's nice to know that it's not all doom. <laughs> I have been exercising a lot. I did a really fantastic run. I did a, a 10k run uh, if, with a lot of my work colleagues and it was a sort of a group event that we went to here in Portugal. I did drink a hot chocolate beforehand which wasn't the smartest move. <laughs> 
And uh, so I often don't give myself enough credit in terms of making progress towards so many different things in my life. It's just uh, I do think as far as where I've defined what my goals are, uh, whether I am actually taking steps towards them, I do feel like I'm going at a pace that's a bit slower. I think the most important thing that I do right now is being able to take a deep breath, not try to judge myself too harshly for not achieving these personal goals, but being able to just be in the present moment, take a deep breath and be happy. And I think meditating is the number one thing that I do that contributes to reducing the amount of stress that I feel in my life. But this video has been a bit of a ramble. I'm just going to check what other things I have that I want to mention that I wrote down yesterday. Oh yeah, I didn't finish the Old School RuneScape Quest Law series, but I did get two videos done. Two of the most difficult quests those were, and two of my better videos I would say in the whole series. Um, I've only got two more difficult quests to do, and one of them I'm basically at the end of the quest. I'm at the end of the quest, basically. I'm just missing the final boss fight, but it's close to impossible uh, with my current stats. So I still need to do some training, uh, which is going to take dozens and dozens of hours before I can even do that boss fight. And then the final quest uh, to complete the series is even more difficult. And even when I complete those two quests, there are four or five more new quests that are much easier, at least, that I still have to complete as well. Uh, the project is so close to complete. Yes, last year I did a really fantastic job over the course of 10 months of uploading three videos every single week. Uh, although I will say it didn't really train my video editing skills because I was just doing the same thing over and over again. I did learn a lot of uh, new techniques in the sense that I know how to optimize the process of uh, cutting videos and uh, working with software and knowing uh, how to find those shortcuts. So that helps. Um, so I have laid the groundwork for the Twitter files. I did that 10k run. I've lost three kilos so far this year, although I wanted to be on track to losing four at this point. I've lost three, but because of all the running I'm doing, I do think I have managed to build a lot more muscle. I'm also incorporating more push-ups into my uh, daily routine and uh, ab exercises, so that's something that will be increasing as well. My goals are to run a half marathon within the next three months uh, before uh, the summer starts. That's the goal, is to run a half marathon before the summer. And then hopefully before the end of the year, before the end of winter, uh, I want to be able to, or should I say, yeah, before the end of autumn, I want to be able to run a marathon. That's my goal, my, my big goals for this year physically. And I feel pretty confident that I'll be able to achieve that. I think I, uh, in terms of my morning routine of doing exercise, meditating, stretching, uh, breath work, I, I am quite consistent at that. And I'd say with the exception of two weeks that I had in the middle of February, I have been quite consistent with that since January. So very happy about that. Something I mentioned in the last quarterly update is that I was hoping that I'd be able to find a bit more of my flow at work. And maybe God has answered. In January, I started finding my flow a bit more at work. And it's actually been, oddly enough, sometimes enjoyable. Uh, which didn't happen in the first eight months that I was working there, but I'm, I'm glad that I'm flowing a bit more with it now. Uh, it's going all right, and I had a, a few weeks, a few weeks back, uh, was a bit stressed with work, where it was sort of taking over my free time, where my brain was always thinking about it, and taking over my sleep sometimes, and I wasn't sleeping right, and I was dreaming about things happening, and it was, it felt like a lot of things were accumulating at the same time. And uh, when, when that was the case, uh, I wasn't really happy with it, uh, but it's managed to taper down a bit. It's, I'm a bit more calm now. So yeah, I'm finding a bit more flow at work. Uh, this schedule that I follow, it starts at 4.30 in the morning. That's because I'm a morning person and I really have no energy to... I have no energy to work on my personal projects in the evening. I rarely, rarely, probably once every couple of months feel the mood to be able to get home and just work on a project that I want to do uh, when it comes to like video editing. I, I find it much easier to read a book uh, when I get home at the end of the day. That's much easier for me. Uh, so I wake up really early because it gives me all the time in the morning to spend at least two hours. That's all the time I get really, two hours to work on personal projects. Recently it's been reading, uh, when it is video editing or working on those projects, it is that. 
and then I do my morning routine and then I get to go to work and that, that's just what works best for me although it does come at the cost of not really having a social life um, I see my family every week and that's always nice I see my friends probably once a month at this point um, I think one of the reasons work has been flowing a bit more for me is because I'm seeing familiar faces all the time uh, all those acquaintances that I've made some of them uh, I would go so far to say friend but you know it's, it's still very much a only see them at work uh, ordeal but in terms of seeing my real friends that I've had since I was a kid since I was younger that only happens about once a month maybe at most twice a month um, and I, I understand that I'm an introvert I, I love spending time alone I really really enjoy spending time alone and I have no problem with it uh, for extensive periods not too extensive of course but I'm fine with it and every now and then I just want a weekend to myself I don't feel the need to socialize with anyone in my free time that does happen as well but uh, it, it does come at a cost uh, following this schedule uh, not being able to fulfill that that parameter in life you know you've got to fill that social bar uh, I don't really socialize much and I not 100% comfortable meeting groups of strangers I am good at one-on-one -on -one conversations sometimes uh, I can have a one-on-one -on -one conversation with a random person and I'm perfectly content to do that but groups uh, that, that just gets a bit more stressful for me if there's a group of people talking I will see myself sink into my seat and become like an audience member watching a movie at the cinema and I'll just see the conversation happen and I will rarely ever feel the impulse to add to the conversation unless I feel like there's something particularly relevant to say I don't really <laughs> contribute much I feel more like I'm in the background uh, I like focusing on one thing at a time I think in my free time, which on a normal day is between three, maybe three and a half hours of free time on a work day. I like focusing on one thing at a time. And while I haven't been motivated to work on the Twitter files, I have been motivated to read. Um, so I think that's what most of my free time is going to look like moving forward, at least for the next few weeks. I don't know if the whole next three months is going to be like that. I definitely see myself reading a lot more. Um, so I think that's something... I'm happy to spend time on, time away from screen, in front of a book. It's a, it's a really good thing. Something else I'll mention now at the end of the video. I doubt many people get this far, uh, but this is just a little bit of a personal sort of achievement. I, I don't think about this too much, but uh, it could be a topic on its own, and it has been on this channel before. Um, on January 8th this year, I made a, a pact with my cousin, and we made a promise to... Uh, Quit smoking weed, basically. Uh, for him, it's a bit more difficult than it is for me, uh, seeing that I probably at most was once or twice a week. For him, it was like a daily thing. I cut, basically, and I haven't smoked in 75 days as of recording this video. And it's not been too difficult. The first month was much easier. The last few weeks have been interesting because my mind's been thinking... If it was available, if I had it here, I know that I would be smoking, which is weird, you know. So, of, of course, I've managed to do a good job of setting that boundary to make sure that it's not available to me. But uh, it's weird to always have that temptation always lurking there. And out of the four main addictions that I would say that I've had to deal with in my life, uh, ranking them from most addictive to least would have been YouTube, sugar, porn, and then weed. Weed has been the only one of those four that has genuinely just been pretty easy to get rid of and deal with i think the problem with the other three is that there's just so available uh, i think that's a huge problem and i don't see myself managing to stop any of the other habits like sugar one i see myself more likely than the screen ones the screen ones the youtube and the porn like that's those two in particular i find very very difficult to deal with Probably I'd even put porn as more addictive than sugar for me, to be honest. Um, I, th I, think, I think that would be right because it's just so available at any time of the day. You can just replenish your dopamine like that. And, uh, and the, the circuitry in my brain has sort of uh, molded around that for so long that 
even despite my awareness of this issue. Uh, for over five years, I've been aware of this and wanting to reduce it. Still haven't been able to. The sugar one I have been able to on occasion. Uh, the weed one pretty easily, uh, despite still feeling tempted. Um, what, what does this mean moving forward? Well, I thought about it. And I actually did this thing. I did an exercise where I decided to write out if there was a way for me to smoke and I felt almost or I reduced as much as possible how much guilt I felt about it so that what were the conditions I needed to, the boxes I needed to tick so that if I did decide to smoke, I wouldn't feel bad about it. I realized I could plan out a really nice day. I could go camping. I could find a really nice view, see the sunset. I could listen to some great music. I could do it after a very successful week of working on videos. Let's say I'm really proud of myself for how much progress I've made on the videos and personal development and self-help. I could get to the end of that week knowing fully that I get to reward myself. I realized I still get all the benefits of those situations even without having to smoke weed. Like I still get to have the benefits of feeling like I had a fantastic week. I still get the benefit of going for a lovely camping, uh, seeing a beautiful uh, scenery. I get to enjoy all of that regardless. And, and that was an interesting realization for me because I kept trying to plan it around this idea that I will feel the moment more intensely if I'm in an altered state of mind. The same way that I feel like music is more intense or the flavors that I eat are more intense. It's, it's really strange, but the longer that you spend without smoking, you realize all those things are always there. What weed does is basically shut down like analytical parts of your brain so that you do get fully absorbed in the moment. That moment's always there, whether you're in an altered state of mind or not. You've, be, you've got to be able to calm your brain down. Something that's been very positive for me in terms of calming my brain down has been meditation, like I said, but also prayer. Prayer for me recently has been incredibly um it's been incredibly helpful because in very subtle ways i do feel more present because of it uh, i think those two actions of meditating and praying i think almost go hand in hand in terms of the very subtle ways that it can positively affect your life and i say subtle because I do think there is a cosmological force of consciousness that underlines all things and is and everything is connected. This would be the best way to describe, I suppose, my philosophy of uh, uh, life and death and consciousness. It's like a river that's flowing. It's all one thing, but every now and then a river becomes a waterfall and when the water droplets are falling, the droplet is separate from the whole. And you can look at that droplet and say, well, look at this beautiful little droplet, all crystallized and all of that, all the water that's there, that's separate from the rest, that's different to everything else. And when, when it gets to the bottom of the waterfall, it rejoins the river, that whole one. The way I see my life and what every life is, is that we're all these drops in the waterfall that are separate from each other only temporarily. Where what we were was some sort of amalgamation of consciousness all together before we were born we then get into this river where we're separate and we have an ego and we, we think we're different from everyone else and then we drop into the river once again after we die and i think there's this thing connectivity this whole consciousness i think is connected all part of one big really interesting cycle in a very esoteric sense nothing that you'll ever be able to prove physically something that you'll never be able to prove using a machine to measure it and say, ah, yes, that is consciousness. I don't think that's the case. And uh, I'm curious to see how AIs try to simulate it. You can approximate human intelligence, but the, the actual experience of human consciousness uh, becoming uh, uh, part of the machine, I think is still a bit more far out than super intelligence. But um, the whole reason I bring this up and talk about meditation and prayer is that when you're really able to calm your mind and you're able to pray for other people, you really try to ask, if you do believe in God, you really do try to ask to help all the people who are suffering in the world, to help all the people who do not have the blessed opportunities that 
uh, we get to experience. Uh, particularly in my case, I have a really fantastic life and something I've never been, I've never found it difficult to be, except very few phases in my life, consistently I've never found it difficult to be grateful, immensely grateful. And that's the first thing I always say whenever I, I pray is I'm always grateful for everything that I get to experience. And then I always try to ask not necessarily firstly to help me become a better version of myself. I know that's something that I have to work on and I can't ask God to do that for me. That's something I have to do. But I do ask if God is able to have any sort of impact in my life that it does help contribute to other people as well that it does help other people better their own lives and even if i can't be the vessel for that and do it directly i still ask that whatever energy is out there if it is able to direct itself into helping those that are doing bad i really hope that it does and those are things i always try to focus on and pray most nights um, sometimes in the mornings and ever since i've started doing this in very subtle ways and it's hard for me to give clear examples because it's uh more a felt experience than it is something that you'll be able to measure scientifically that I have felt more connected I have felt more at peace I have felt uh, stronger in this belief I, uh, that there is more beyond just the, the human experience of you know what life is there is more beyond it I believe and uh, so yeah, quite a rambly sort of video. These videos don't tend to be this long, but I've got quite a lot of things on my mind and taking an inventory of uh, the situation I'm in, I think is important. I'm trying not to beat myself up too much for not having made as much progress as I want in terms of reading and video editing, but it was only less than two weeks ago that I managed to really take a, a deeper realization like, oh, you know, me not achieving these goals is because I have been spending so much time in front of screens and that awareness has made me really take a step away and I'm reading more and I'm playing more piano and if the next three months is let's say a bunch more reading and piano and not still not having made any Twitter files videos I, I've got to find a way to be okay with that as long as I still feel like I'm in the positive direction and I, I'll conclude with this because I'm not hitting these metrics that I've set up for myself because I'm not a hundred percent okay with this let's say lack of progress despite all of that I am still going in a positive direction it is a long journey this one of self-help and I've been on it for a while now for many years and I am in a much better place now than I was two years ago in terms of all the progress I've made the videos I've made the books I've read and in terms of my physical fitness I've been more consistent in terms of getting a, a sleep schedule in order, in terms of getting my life balanced, I am way better now than I was years ago. And it's very difficult often for me to remind myself of that. And so ramble over, I'm doing good. Sure, it could be better, yes, but progress is still progress. And uh, uh, very soon I'll be making the book review for How to Raise a Healthy Gamer. Thanks for watching.